everybody, my name is Jimmy and welcome back to Jimmy Does Knitting. I'm an expat living here in Amsterdam and I like to talk about my knitting. Usually I have a topic or thing that has just come into my life that in my knitting world that I like to talk about. And today that is some acquisitions and the projects that come with them. So I've been able to get back to some old favorites. I've been able to try some new stuff out and I'm working on a very special project for my mother, which is a pain in my butt. Um, but I love her, so we're going for it. Um, and yeah, that is what is on the cards today. I had some gift certificates because as many of you know, as I uh, am fun employed at the moment, so I am knitting quite heavily and I've been trying to leverage sales and gift certificates and stuff like that in order to do what I want to do and to explore and to do all this stuff. Um, one of the gift certificates I had was for Holst. If you're new to this channel, I like Holst. I find it very affordable. I find it a good quality yarn and I love to work with it. So I went shopping. Um, I will show you what I got and I'll show you why I kind of did the initial purchase. I got some fun stuff. I don't know where these are. Oh, I got some stitch markers for one. These are light bulb stitch markers in a bunch of different colors. I like a light bulb stitch marker, they're my favorite. So I got a ton. And I also got some color cards, which are right here. And this is the color cards for the whole Super Soft. And it has all, I guess, of what they have um, in the range right now. And it's like color graded, which is really nice. I was hoping that they actually had more grays and browns. I think that's really just like this section right here. But I wanted to have them all in one place so I could look at them. Because what I've been thinking is like a Marie Wallen sort of thing. Um, I don't necessarily think that the color work is particularly beautiful, but from a knitting standpoint and a technical standpoint, I think it's super interesting. So fairly simple motifs, but the combination of colors, the combination of the stitches, I think it's like an easy knit, but then you also get to play with color and stuff like that. And I wanted to try it out. Marie Wallen has her own brand of yarn, and then she also used her work for Roman, so a lot of that stuff um, also works. There's a place called The Off Stop here in Amsterdam, which has her yarn and is like a Roman flagship. So if I really want to do stuff, with that yarn, I can go, I can get it, and I can I can knit it up. But it's also a little bit more expensive, where Holst is a little bit more affordable, and you can also get like bags of like um like four color gradient for like ten grams of each, maybe or something like that, that you can use and you can use that for color work. So I was thinking maybe that's a good idea for this stuff. I'm not really quite sure. Um, either way, I think that would be some, like, a notch in my, my knitting belt is, like, a Marie Wallen, a Shetland pattern with a bunch of different crazy colors and stuff. So it's undetermined how I want to do that or what type of project or for whom I want to do it, but I think that this will help me a lot. And I also like using Holst on things that maybe I'm not going to wear or, like, I don't really have like a recipient in mind. I usually tend to knit what I want to knit and I find holes to be good quality and it comes in a wide range of colors and it's it's fine for that knit and I'm like not investing too much but I feel like I really accomplished something. So that's what I like to do and I'm excited to have these shade cards to look at them with. And then the last thing I bought from Holst, which was a little bit on the pricier side, I think it was like 10 euros for a 50 gram ball, was, oh no, I don't have a, I'm sorry for the rustling, is this Holst Cielo. It's like a, it's a blown yarn. So it's like a mesh tube that's made of polyamide that's blown alpaca and wool into it. It is super soft and like squishy and really nice and super, super, super warm. This is 42% alpaca, 42% fine wool, and 16% polyamide. Um, like I said, I think most of the polyamide is in the chaining of this thing. And it's 50 grams for 125 meters. And this is the color granny, which is light gray. So 
I got this because I am working on the Oba sweater by Agony Knit. Um, information will be below. I originally bought some Manchalope for it and I have determined that it was like pulling too much and the technique that I was using to knit collar work that I normally knit collar work with simply wasn't going to be working. So I bought this as a yarn to experiment with and then um, the sweater. So I'm holding this with <clears throat> um, the Rerum Natura Gilead in the color Nuit. Nuit? N-U-I-T. It's 100% wool. It's a worsted weight. It's really nice. I really like this. I think maybe this is coming a little bit darker on camera. But uh, this is what I was going to hold it with. This I got from Stephen and Penelope. It was on sale, which is why I got it. Should I have bought the contrast color um, with this on sale? Yes. And not the unspun wool? Yes. Um, this is not great for color work. I'm just going to say that right now. You will see why in about two seconds. So the plan for this was my mom expressed an interest in having an all over color work sweater, which is not something I particularly wanted to make at the time, but we agreed that that would be okay. But I would use it as a way to explore yarns or a different designer or something like that. So that's where this second one came in. This also, I haven't used this before. I really like this. It's super soft and I was glad that I got a ton of it on sale. But um, the unspun and then the blown yarn I think were a bit of an uh, indulgence for me to keep me occupied and interested in with it. And the sweater is on my needles. I've gotten down to the body. Let me see if I can hold this up for you and it not get so tangled. So it's a little, little thing like this. It's a nice project. It's a top-down raglan with like a little bit of a bow turtleneck or a half turtleneck, mock turtleneck, as I guess is what they call it. And then I've just been knitting on it. So the thing about this is, is this pattern is a very specific type of woman that this fits. I guess it can be men, but it's it's designed for a lady. And um, it's meant to be like a lot of ease and super casual and really cool and like chic and scanty. But my mom, <laughs> love her, is, is none of those. And she wanted a size that was more close to a sweater that she would wear. Um, they come in like, and I think the smallest size, there's three sizes of this pattern. Uh, the smallest size is like a 45 inch, which is like not this big, but it's pretty close. It's definitely bigger than I would wear because it's supposed to have like 10 inches, um, like 40 centimeters ish positive ease, if not more. And that I uh, means that it, like my mom would be swimming in it. I don't think that she would like it very much. Uh, so what I have done, I've modified this extensively. I followed the pattern for the neck and then down to like the raglan start. And then once I hit a yoke depth of eight inches, I don't know what it calls for, for how many rows or whatever in the pattern, I split for sieves. So I think I had like, well, I'm not going to tell you the numbers because whatever, but, um, so I did that and then I cast on 11 stitches underneath the underarm and I think that got me the width that I wanted and now I'm knitting the length of a sweater that my mom would wear. I'll do the the uh, hem and I'm gradually decreasing. I think like every four inches or 10 centimeters I'm putting in like one row of decreases just at the, the side seams. It has this really cool, I am following this from the pattern, that it has this side seam detail right here which I think is nice. Um, so there is that. This originally, the cuffs and collar were supposed to be the lighter color, but my mom likes blue, much like I like black. So I put this all in the blue. And this is a tremendously warm garment. The, the inside's messy. I don't know what it is. I, it's not a complicated pattern. It's like, I mean, it's a really easy pattern to follow and I mess up a lot. So don't judge my floats a whole lot, but the inside is basically all 
alpaca. It's like just a, a lining of alpaca with this yellow here. And that is super warm and super great. And my mom's like me, so that's fine. I'm not worried about her being too hot with this or anything because she'll put the, she'll put the house down to like, I don't know, 70 degrees or something if she gets too hot in it, which is like, whatever. So, and then that's also part of the reason why I didn't want to use the unspun wool because it's next to skin and it's a lot of it. And she has really sensitive skin. So she's touched some alpaca. I don't think she's allergic to it. I hope not, because she'll never wear this. But um, I think that this is a much better choice in terms of unspun or this for the color work, just because it will keep her warmer. So that's the modifications for the sleeves. I have a certain number of stitches. I'm just gonna redo the math, um, reduce the sleeves using the same like um, stitch right here but just reduce it to like a cuff length that she will like in the original pattern, they're quite large. And it, it, that's just not, that's not gonna fly for uh, Mama Does Knitting. So that's what this is. And as you can see, I've had some tension issues, but also the nature of the alpaca is doing something we weird. I've sent pictures to my mom, she doesn't mind it. It's not like super, super consistent. I think it is over in the body a little bit more because I got a rhythm to it. And um, it has a really nice like halo and fuzz to it, but it has this sort of inconsistent, almost marled look just because sometimes I pull the stitches tighter than another and it really, 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 really shows on this fabric. So up here, you can tell that I was a lot tighter Part of that was because of the needle I was using, I, did, I should have changed to a bigger needle sooner because they think that with this, this is a larger needle than I would normally use. And it was like a normal cord. I'm talking about cord, not needle. The needle size stays the same. By the way, I'm using a six millimeter, which I believe is a US 10 for this color work. Still not getting gauge, doesn't matter. I'm redoing the pattern anyway. So, um, it's about 20 stitches per inches for me with this. And here it was just a little too tight. It was a little bit tighter because of the cord that I used. And that's my own fault. And then another thing is I had to learn how to knit differently. When you have, I knit, let's, let's start back how I knit color work. And to pull up an example, I knit with my left hand in color work. So I, I'm two stranded continental with color work. I wrap it around my fingers and I go like this. This is, you can't see it. It's too light there, too dark here. Doesn't matter. This is how I normally do it. But when I'm using more of one color, which is this darker color, instead of this one, it tends to like bunch up. So like it, it ends up going like this and then I just like can't move my fingers. And this becomes irritating because after like every 15 stitches, then I have to like re-go and like reset my hands and try it over again. So that was not working. It was driving me insane. Same thing happens with the, the fleece stitch, which if you're not familiar, is just that like V, one stitch of color work in like, you know, every so often or whatever. And then there's like a row of, you know, your main color knitting, main color knitting and all that. So um, that is, also something that really like bunches and I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So what I've been doing, and this is not necessarily correct with color dominance, but this is how I've been rolling with this, is the color that I use the most, which is actually the background color, I've been putting in my left hand and then the accent color I've been putting in my right hand. For color dominance, it's actually the other way around. Is usually the most dominant color I believe goes in your left hand. I remember in Continental, when I hold two in my left hand, the color closest to me is going to be the dominant color. So I believe that this alpaca, the white, is the non-dominant color, which is also making the blue stand out a little bit more. Either way, I've had to learn to knit with like just th throwing. I'm not a thrower. I It doesn't work well for me, but because the tension of this needs to be so light, I literally just like leave this alone and then I knit, 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 knit. And then when I need another one, I just like pick it up and like 
put it on my needle, knit, 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 pick it up, put it on my needle. It's a little bit more time consuming. It gets in a rhythm and it doesn't, um, it doesn't bunch up, which really, 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 really irritated me. So that is essentially the drama of this Oba sweater, which isn't really the Oba sweater anymore. It's like a Oba patterned sweater. Um, and to be honest, if I were to knit this for myself, I would have taken this out and just used a different yarn, I think, but my mom seems to be pleased with it. You know, the adventure continues. I had to redo the math anyway. So it's like, I might as well just go with this and see how it, it runs. So it will, another thing was about the pattern. There were a couple things about the pattern. It was one, it came in three sizes that were all very large. Two, it didn't have a schematic. What I like for a sweater is a schematic because I modify almost everything. And if I don't have a schematic, then I have a hard time figuring out what I need to modify. Um, and then the other thing is the yarn was all like a DK weight held with a mohair. So I had to totally guess on the amounts of balls to buy of this. So the alpaca is super, super, super light. It's going to make it difficult to estimate things. I went kind of by yardage as opposed to like weight. Um, and even then it's trying to like, you know, if you combine a DK and a, a fingering weight or like um, a lace weight, which is the mohair, then like you just have two yardages. You kind of have to guess is what I'm saying. Also, because I wanted more of the main color, which was the blue up top and in the cuffs and stuff, I like bought an extra ball of what I thought I needed because Otherwise, I didn't want to be, like, this This was pretty difficult to find in stock, and so I didn't want to be out on it. Steven and Penelope is great. They allow, like, exchanges for store credit, and they're enough. It's fine. So I figured I could buy an extra one. And I guess those are my, my issues and what I've done to mitigate them with this. I think this is going to be a lovely sweater. It's going to be super warm. I'm hoping that she'll like it. I will do something else another time. But that is why I made the big whole purchase. And this was all bought using gift cards. So I am not like out any money and I got to play with uh, some nicer yarns than I would probably buy for myself and experiment with things. And it's really nice. and. Look, it's a learning project. Sometimes this one needs to take a time out and sometimes it's fine. I've been knitting on it all day today, but it had like a good, a good long break there for a while. So this is the Oba sweater. And then what I do is I either have like a tote bag, just a generic tote bag that I keep everything in, or I had these wicker bags that Mr. Does Knitting got the anthropology store in Amsterdam closed and these were the shopping baskets for the customers. So he just got a couple and I used them by the couch to keep all my stuff organized. Uh, this is a at home thing. This does not travel with me. Um, I will knit in public. I think it's fine, but I don't know. This is, <laughs> this is a bit too much old lady at the beach. So that is my holst. Second thing, let's grab the other basket over here. There was a sale at Woolly Knit and I told myself if there was ever a sale at Woolly Knit, I would buy a sweater quantity of the Aran and this one color of a cone that I wanted. The sale was 20% off, which basically made it about even VAT shipping and stuff is 21%. So it basically paid for the VAT and all I had to do was pay for the yarn and the shipping which was nice because it gave me a chance to try things and I'm using it for a couple of things. One thing I bought, because I've always said that if there's a sale, I wanted to get this. I hope this comes up on camera. It's looking obnoxiously neon highlighter yellow. And I hope that it, it looks like that to you because it is, and it's wonderful. I love it. I probably would like knit a sweater out of this or like pair it with a mohair. I'm not really quite sure. I um, I did do a sample of this with like a purple mohair and it didn't turn out as nice as I thought it would. Do we have it? I have it right here. I have a big sample box, right? Or a swatch box right there. This is it with the, the purple mohair. It was a bit 
a bit more marled than I wanted it to be. But yeah, anyway, I love this. It's obnoxious. It's great. It is the British Wool 4-ply 500-gram cone of Zest Yellow. And I got one of these. I know that this could make a sweater and a bunch of other stuff because uh, of a fingering weight cone. Yeah, you can get a lot for 500 grams. So I bought this because I couldn't resist. This was like the, the present for me on top. And I experimented with it and I made this, oh, you cannot see this color work whatsoever, but this is a like a traditional Norwegian sort of thing. It's the Forest Star Hat. Can you see this? It's the Forest Star Hat by Brigger Berka. I'm still going through my Nordic Knits um, book. Did I do the central double decreases wrong? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, is it fine? Also, yes. I'm thinking what I might do is there's a point in winter where it's just dark. It's just dark. It's not necessarily cold, but it's dark. And I wear all black, which means if I'm out biking to and from work or yoga or wherever I may be going, I blend into the darkness and nobody sees me. Um, the Dutch are not the most observant. I'm going to call it out. They don't seem to know what's happening around them. So maybe a bright yellow hat that's kind of ugly while I'm biking would be the solution. That's a, that's potential. So, um, maybe that's it. Maybe not. I don't really know, I, but I thought it was fun. I wanted to make this hat. I wanted to use this yellow yarn and just see how the British four ply was. And uh, the answer is I really like the yarn. I held it with the Kona's whole super soft in the acre color that I make, I don't know, a ton of stuff out of. And yeah, it's like a nice soft wool. It's, it's great. It's an obnoxious color. Is this the most successful looking hat? No, I mean, you can barely even see it, but I quite enjoyed making it and I quite enjoyed it. Uh, it took, I don't know, a day, two, not very long. So it wasn't anything worsted or worsted, anything wasted. And yeah, so that's my forest star hat made with the lemon zest from, or no, the zest from uh, Woolly Knit. And then I also got these. I got the 400 grams, what am I doing with this? 400 grams Aran weight, um, British wool cones, and this is the color of rust tan. And I got three of these because I wanted to make a new version of this sweater. So what I am wearing is a self-drafted hoodie, which is actually very nice, and I love it. It's made out of Drops Alpaca? Drops Nord? No, it's not Drops Nord. Drops Nepal. It's Drops Nepal, which is like, I don't know, 30% alpaca or something like that. It's a hoodie that I made. This is my natural state of living. A black hoodie. I'm wearing sweatpants. Um, I have black sweatpants, black hoodie, sitting on the couch and knitting. I love textured knits. I love just texture and I love construction and this has like a weird construction. So I wanted to make like a, an official sample with it with a little bit more accessible wool or something that's a little bit more comparable. So I figured that the Willy Knit was a good good one for it and it was on sale. So that made it even better. Did it end up being like super, super affordable? No, because of all the shipping and stuff, but it was pretty good in terms of price point. Um, I wasn't mad at it. I think I paid like 150-ish total euros, which over four cones is like 35-ish, which is like, less than 10 euros per 100 grams. So it's not the most economical, it's not the least economical for me, and it's pretty good. Either way, I've been enjoying this yarn. Mr. Does Knitting picked this up because I wanted to knit a, like a real sample with an adjusted things on this. So the things I don't like about this hoodie is it's um, a bit too big, like it's a bit long, and then, I don't know if you can tell this, from the lighting, but like the sleeves are really bunchy, like really, 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 really bunchy. And that's because I measured this off of a hoodie that I really like, but the fabric's just different. And knit fabric is not necessarily like 
the best at being bunchy and it just sags after a while because it's heavy and you're using all this other stuff. So I wanted to make some adjustments to the pattern and send it out. I'm almost at the point where a tech editor needs to be contacted. So by the time that this comes out, I will probably be needing one. If you know a tech editor, let me know. If you want to test net or know somebody who thinks this would be a good test net, let me know. Um, I want to publish this pattern. I think it's great. It's fantastic. What is this looking like right now? <clears throat> is this. I am very surprised. This is what I have left of my 400 gram cone so far. And I thought by this point in the project, I would, I would be out of this, which is why I ordered three. I don't know what, I'm probably gonna have an extra one and I don't know what to do with it, but it will be fine. Um, and I got the numbers based off of the weight of this one. So this was 20, 50 gram balls. So I figured I would use about two and a half cones of the woolly knit, but that is not, I think I'll be using less. Probably be using less. Anyway, the point being is I am here on it. And this is my hoodie. So it is knit. The idea is one flat piece of knitting and you knit the back, which is what we're on. And then you come up and over and knit down and knit the front. The sleeves are included. So that's what these wings are. These are the sleeves. I put in a little gusset, which you really can't tell, and then the sleeves. Now I wanted to adjust the stitch on it. This one's a, it's called like a serial, seersucker stitch. It's a bit of a quilted stitch. And I thought that it was too big. I don't know. I thought it was like too much of a pronounced texture for this. So one of the things that I wanted to adjust, aside from like the sleeves, which this is actually a lot more narrow than the other one, is the stitch. So I just used like a double, a seed stitch, which is like um, a knit two, purl two, or not knit two, knit one, purl one, sort of standard stitch pattern. So I did that with the body and the welt that I'm putting in, and then um, I'm knitting currently up the back, and then I'll do some short rows and stuff and then, then come back up to the front. So this is a lot of work. Um, you sweater knitters, I think you would enjoy this. There's enough to keep you, like enough increases to keep you on your toes, but like not necessarily a ton of thinking, which is, I always appreciate. And then um, for you shawl knitters, I think that there's a, there's a point right now where I'm on like, 250, 300 stitches per row. So it does have that thing and then it's gonna start doing some other stuff. It is a simple knit. Like I would say that it's not going to be difficult to knit, but you do have to like have some faith in yourself. Um, like the hard part was figuring out the math and the pattern. What you need to do is like, if you know an increase, if you know a German shirt row, if you know a decrease, then you're set. Like that's, that's all you really need to know for this. Um, you have to like some pearls because it's knit flat, but it's really like a nice, cool pattern, I think. And um, it's coming together quite nicely. And I think that this could be like a hit, meaning like I really enjoy it. I think it looks good. I think the knitting community would really enjoy this too. So hopefully that is the case. Oh, and I had this little stitch marker. I got it in Harlem one day from a shop called Dry and Zo, which means like knit and sew. So. Like, so, like, oh, so, not S-E-W. Anyway, it's a little windmill and I'm using it to mark the front because with the seed stitch, it's the same pattern on the front and the back. And I wanted to make sure that, that I knew which one was the front and which side I was increasing on. So I didn't mess it up. It's a little bit easier now that I have some stock and net stitch because obviously the knit stitches are here and the purl stitches are here. So there is that that I'm working on with the woolly knit. And this is something, guys, I need some help with. Um, the channel's not getting a tremendous amount of views. It seems that there are a couple of really nice, like, loyal viewers, which thank you very much if that's you. But I really, need some help with getting this out there and helping get some hype. 
YouTube is the thing I enjoy. What I really want to do, I think, is more of this than building Instagram. But what I really want to do is have people knit this because I think that this is a wonderful garment and it's so cool and everybody would like to do it. And you can play with it so much. Like, what if this was all boucle? What if each section was a different color? What if you put stripes into it? What would that look like? It would look like so much fun. So like, I want to see different versions and different samples and people's imaginations go wild. Like what if it was like neon, like blue and purple and like yellow or like, you know, a fluffy teddy bear. I, I don't know. There are different versions of this that need to come out and be made. So uh, if you can, you know, razz your friends a little bit and say, hey, check this out. That would be wonderful. I'm trying to, little side tangent right here. I have a little new mic. I'm trying to improve the sound and the lighting and stuff. I did invest a little bit recently, but like in general, I'm not getting enough views to justify buying like an 800 euro camera and like setting up my whatever and getting a professional lighting set up. Like I just can't. But so I'm hoping that this is okay enough for now. And then, you know, continuous evolution and improvement and stuff are on the way. So the mic is, is a step with that, but hope. Hopefully this will, who knows? Anyway, that's me thinking out loud. Now there's one more acquisition, which it looks like we have some time to talk about. Uh, is something very, very special. There is, uh, my in-laws came and visited. There was a whole thing where my parents, <laughs> they met my in-laws' parents. They haven't ever met before. They both live in different countries to us. My parents live on a different continent. It's difficult. So the in-laws though brought me a birthday present and I was so excited and I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this, but like, let's do this. So this is, there's gonna be a lot of crinkling, so you're, you're gonna have to bear with me. Here we go. I have it now. So they have a friend or friends, Roger and Christina, who own Hayes Farm alpacas. I think they're selling the farm. I think that these alpacas will not be shorn and spun into yarn often, or like maybe a season, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, the alpacas are not there to be fibers. They just sort of like have a friend that like can spin some stuff for them sometimes. And then they get it. So I got some yarn on the request of my in-laws. Okay, I'm done. I swear, I swear, I swear. So the the farm, let's read this thing, is 100% uh, pure alpaca double knitting yarn, so DK weight. Uh, this yarn was produced by our alpacas at Hayes Farm and then washed, carded, and spun, especially for us at East Anglia Alpaca Mill in Norfolk. Alpacas have very fine and light fleece, so the yarn produces soft and luxurious. It is an excellent thermal, and it has excellent thermal properties, even when wet, warmer than sheep's wool, and not too prickly. It has no lanolin, and it can be worn by people with allergies who cannot wear wool. Cool. I think if you know a decent amount about it, it's that. It is, this is so soft. This is so soft. And so the deal is they have, I've seen the pictures. They have one black alpaca, which is, this is like a really, really dark brown, but it's like, it's black. And then they have um, other alpacas called a hukaya, hukaya, which produce this fleece. And then there's this one, which is a special one. So this is the Suri alpaca, which everybody uses. And this is from a sheep called Nazca, a sheep an alpaca called Nazca. So there's one of these things, and I have like maybe a sweater's quantity worth of this. If not, it's pretty darn close. So like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I kind of want to do a sweater, but I know that it will be too drapey, you know, like 100% alpaca, that won't be, I don't know. It will be a nice sweater, but it will also be something that I can't control. So it would need to be like a simple pattern. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with this. And then, um, so the Nazca is the Surrey alpaca. Um, and he was like a little, little more silky. They put a little note in here. So the, this yarn is from Nazca, who is a different breed. 
His fleece is more silky, the Surrey breed, and when the yarn is used, it drapes more than that of the fluffier um, Hukaya breed. And so what it is, is these ones, if you look at the Hukaya sheep, sheep, alpacas, goddamn. If you look at the, the Haya alpacas, they have like curly hair, I guess, like curly hair. And this is curly hair, so this has a little bit more, I don't want to say kink to it, but it has more of that like rustic rustic. And then the Surrey is just a bit smoother. Um, you can tell when it's spun up. This looks a little bit more, I don't know, carded and put together and stuff. So anyway, I have all of this yarn, this beautiful alpaca yarn. I want to do something with it. I have no clue what to do with it. If you have some suggestions, please let me know. Um, and then see if you can find Hayes Farm. If you're in the UK, go and visit. Um, if not, then I don't know. Or you want to buy it? I think, you know, they're selling it with the alpacas. If you're in the UK, you want to do that? Go for it. Let me know. We'll visit. <laughs> it would be good. Um, anyway, that is my acquisitions and my latest amount of projects and all the things that I'm working on. Thank you so much if you've lasted this long. I need to get a tea. I'm not feeling the best and my throat is getting dry. So this is going to be the end of the podcast. I hope you all are doing well and you're staying warm. And I will be back hopefully in two more weeks for some more bit and chat. I'll talk to you later. Bye.